Goodness, goodness. Hello, everybody. Ian, Christy, Linda, Jules, Joycey. Christy, I think I said. Yep, I did. I did. Hi, all of you. I was busy over here trying to fix something before y'all came on. <clears throat> Be right back. I'm going to get something. Yesterday on Jean's stream, we were talking about, see if I can copy this, do one thing at a time, baby doll. Okay, we were talking about pricing, and there were some questions. Um, and I just mentioned that I had switched to a linear method. Okay, click the super chat for me. I don't want to do that. There, I got rid of it. I see Lena. Okay, the link I put in the chat goes to the page in my um, website where the freebies are. And please don't judge my website because I haven't touched it in eight years. And I'd rather be painting than doing stuff like that. I used to price, now any questions that you have, CB was the one that I asked. I don't think she's in here yet. All right, we'll wait for a few minutes and see if she pops in. Um, I don't think y'all have seen this. This is my latest, or two of my latest pages. I really like that one, and I really like that one. And this is the one I made last week when I panicked because, oh, those uh, colored pencils, the watercolor on the Duralar thing didn't work, so it completely discombobulated me, and that stuff is not sticking. And so this is one of the ones that I tried to do, the rusty colored one, put the girl on. So after y'all went away, then I closed it down. I just cut it and glued it on here. And this is some embossing, heat embossing. Just adds a little different touch, a little tissue paper. I'm going to have to get regular glue to get that down. And yesterday I painted... Two of these. I think it was this one and that one. Or maybe not. I don't remember. But um, practice makes perfect. On the watercolor. I'm going to keep doing several a day until I feel that I've captured it. So. CB, CB, somebody send her an alert. Gail, I think I said Gail. Oh, crap, you're not supposed to have to log in. Uh, that's because it's under my name. I don't want that open. Hang on. Hang on, Snoopy. Snoopy, hang on. And that's not it. I'm over here on 
There we go. Squarespace.com is not supposed to be in there. <laughs> Hang on. New incognito. B. I love, love, love. See if this works. It's under the solid learning. If you go to actually.com, it's under the tab solid learning. It's down toward the bottom. So let me see if this works. I was logged in when I copied the link. There you go. There's two of them on there. They look the same. I, I just got back to the house about 10 minutes before we went on. So I wasn't quite ready. Um, they they should both down. They should each download a separate Excel chart. One of them is um, square inch pricing, and the other one is linear pricing. Um, yeah. Does anybody know how to get with CB? Gail, let me know if that works. Now it should. How many of you work with or are thinking about working with pricing? Make sure both of them are different. I'm not sure that linear one I set up right to download, but maybe I did. Okay, thanks, Joycey. And one of them says linear. No link. Okay, I remember. I remember. I'll have to see if I can fix this. You know, when you switch back and forth from computer work behind the scenes to painting to, you know, whatnot, it takes a good 30 minutes to get it. To get what you want.
I'll be with you in just a minute. I can't remember how to do it. Damn it. Damn it, damn it. All right, I'll have to do that when I'm quiet. Yeah. Hey, Vaughn. All right, so... How many of you are interested in selling your artwork? Just send me a thumbs up or something like that. And while you're there, you can like it and subscribe. Okay, not much lag. I wish y'all were sitting in the room around me on stools and I could... Why are you sitting in the corner, Vaughn? Ian, do you sell your work? Now and again, but not much. Okay. Okay. So you can you can just pretend that we're not talking about this. For years, like 17 years, I did a pricing, and that chart will download, Gail. The square inch one will download. I did a pricing by the square inch, and... Some artists price by how much time it took. Some price because they like it or don't like it. And a way around that in order to be standard across the board <clears throat> is to figure out a way to make it all even. So you just look at a chart and it measures this and this is the price. I charge the same price for watercolor, oil, encaustic. Every everything I do, I charge by the same price. So you know that square inch is where you take the width and the length. Width times the length, and you may get what a hundred square inches. Well, then your pricing chart, which is the one I let you download, or it's on there to download, has a price broken out for every almost every option. So like two by four, four by four and what those square inches are. And the beauty with an Excel chart is that you can, all you do is change your price per square inch and the whole chart will change for you. So it's a real good way to keep up with everything. Um, lose my train. The, if you go by straight square inch price, like say $2 a square inch, your smaller ones will be less expensive in effort to your large ones. In other, other words, you've got to modify your square inch price. So if you're at $2 a square inch in your middle zone, which is, say, 11 by 14 to 16 by 20, and that's $2 a square inch, then you need to be 225 or 250 a square inch to make the smaller ones make sense. These smaller ones take as much time as these big as these medium sized ones. On your larger ones, again, let's say 16 by 20 and up, you want that price per square inch to be lower. Otherwise, they're way out of reach. So you've got to balance it with at least three sections of pricing. Okay. Does that make sense?
Gail, have you got, did that make sense to you? Because I know you're, you're interested. And just in the last few weeks, oh, okay, in general, if you're selling your art regularly, in general, you pick a date during the year. It could be your birthday. It could be the 1st of January or whatnot. And you go up on your price 5% or 10%. And usually when you hit the level that you, that you really go up on a regular basis is when you're selling all the work that you can produce. So you can't keep up. There's a supply and demand. So it stands to reason that you do want to go up 5% every year. I'm not in a gallery at this point, but my prices, when I'm in a gallery, my prices I take are by the square inch doubled for gallery. That's because the gallery takes 50% off the top. Um, if your gallery is someplace away and you have to ship your paintings, you've got to factor in the cost of the shipping and the crates. So let's just keep it simple with non-gallery work right now. So what I just did, because the square inch required a different, I had to look at the chart every time. It was impossible to remember four by four is this much money and a 16 by 20 is down here. If you do the same thing by linear inch, and that means you add your width to your height and you set a linear inch price for just those six categories then it's a whole lot easier for me to follow and as the artist and it's a whole lot easier to explain okay here's a, an example up here and so what i did was took the excel the chart that's on the website and compared the final prices to what my square inch price was and converted them to a linear inch so that's how i do mine OK, so um, everything that's from 20 to 29 linear, linear inches, $17 per linear inch. It's just a math thing. Here's an example. Say it's a 12 by 12 is 24 linear inches and it falls in the 20 by 29 at 17 per linear inch. So 24 linears is 408. So that's, and of course, you won't start with that price range. You'll make up your own. Um, and I print this just little thing, keep it in my purse, even though, or my wallet, even though I know I've got it in, a, in my iPhone and iPad. Cheshire. And there, there ain't, well, there, that ain't, Gail. Okay, somebody let me know when CB comes in. She was the one that was the most curious. So, I got my Beast book. I found it on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble for, I think it was $11, and that included some shipping and some sales tax. So, that was a pretty good price. These are the ones that... Uh, Janet and Kathy are using every a lot of a lot of the fibs are using these, and it is a lightweight paper. If I really wanted to do something that required more weight, I would take my glue stick and just glue two pages together, which I might do. And did I need this? No, I didn't need this, but I have it. Somebody else has one. You know that Wiki's going to have one. Let's warm up today with a little bit in the idea journal. Now, the idea behind this idea journal is, is several fold. Number one, it helps me relax. Number two, it gives me a reason to do something with all the jelly prints and the colored papers and stuff that I have. And number three, I say idea book because some this is the kind of artwork that they sell uh, for people who have a, a, a more tendency toward abstracts rather than 
what I typically paint, which is realism. So somebody, a client could pick this up and look through it and say, oh man, I love that. I'd like to have that one. I'd like to have that one. Hang them side by side. So that's the theory. Uh, if y'all know me very well at all, you know that I uh, have to justify what I spend my time on. So, oh, I was using this. Remember the other day when I told you that I took my doodles and have them in a printable section on my website? In that same section, the charts are. And I offer it in three different gray scales. This, I think, is the darkest one. And you can just come in here and just doodle on top of what I did, trace it, kind of like a coloring book. And then there's a middle one, and then there's one that's real light where you can come in with different colors if you choose to. Anyway, I just had that. That was keeping the light from my overhead lamp here. From casting a globe. And I can't get it back on there so we'll just move it right here for now and make sure that the lighting is good pretty good I'd love to Joycey um, I, like I said I'm not in a gallery I don't have any local galleries in Arkansas and when you start well for example I had a painting that that showed in a gallery in Santa Fe on Canyon Road. Um, and it was there for a month. We delivered the painting because it was in an exhibition, an international exhibition. So we drove it out there and we attended the artist's opening and all that stuff. To ship that sucker home, because it has a special box that's cushioned with foam, that the inset is cut to exactly match that frame, and then that box goes into an, a FedEx box and it gets shipped. You pay the company that goes to the studio to pick up the painting. And then that goes back here. And then it goes to a shipper who actually puts the tags on it, ships it back to you. And then it comes to me. And I think that was about $400, $450 just to ship that one painting. So if you if I were in a gallery far away, I'd have to have wooden crates made to be able to put several paintings in. Now the kicker is they're not going to show at that gallery every every day all day. They they keep most of the paintings. I'm filming. Okay. Um, they keep most of their paintings in the back room and they rotate, you know, depending on what they're doing. Um, and if they don't sell for a period of time then you've got to pay to ship them back to you. The other thing is that if you're doing watercolor for a gallery or pastel, you have to frame it. So there's tons of costs involved, and that's why artwork in galleries is so expensive. There are galleries in Arkansas, but the ones in Fayetteville, Arkansas, are pretty well... Real contemporary type galleries, um, nothing much in Bentonville, which is where I live. Arkansas has some. <laughs> I'm not sure about Fort Smith, but most of the galleries around me are more casual type work, and they don't sell in the price ranges that I sell in. A lot of the stuff is, you know, those funky girls with their heads on sideways and um, real bright colors, a lot like what, what we do on the journaling pages. Um, yes, Little Rock does have some, but to be quite honest with you, I've told you all this before. I work in watercolor and oil and encaustic, and I work in every style imaginable. So to really be valuable to a gallery, you've got to have a style and a consistent style. And I hear artists, I know artists all the time that bitch and moan about, oh, I'm trapped doing landscapes, um, but they don't want me to do anything else because that's what sells. And I would literally blow my head off.
Hey, I'll tell you again where you are. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Sorry, excuse me. And um, a lot of, and I'm going to say this, and if y'all tell me that I'm being a bitch, just go right ahead. A lot of galleries start out with a few pieces of art that are top quality, and then I helped start a, um, a co-op art gallery started out they had really nice artists in there and the more it went on they were taking uh, paintings from students who studied maybe six weeks and so they would that artist would put it in there well if that artist was given that painting away for 50 and I had one over here that was selling for 350 there aren't too many people that are going to justify the difference in that it doesn't matter what the painting looks like and because I've been selling for 17 years, I can't go down on my prices because there's there are too many that have been purchased at that particular range. Okay, if y'all don't have any more questions on that, we're going to go to this. If you think of any, let me know. I've seen it all. Um, I have a friend in France who, she's from Georgia, and um, one season a gallery, Georgia, North Carolina, somewhere down in the um, south. She was so excited. She was going to have a show there, and did all this work and they were beautiful little landscapes some of them were this big but they were framed out bigger 11 by 14 whatnot and um she had to frame them and bring them over here and then it turned out that she had to unframe them over here to get them back to france so it was just a big mess um Anyway, I'm just going to put some champagne down. And I'm not museum quality either. I don't want to brag. Um, but that means that if a gallery is handling museum quality work, like a, in watercolor, like a George Dombat, he's an Arkansas artist. And he's also got work at Crystal Bridges Museum. They're not, they don't want my stuff. So all I'm going to do is start putting a few on my website, post it on Twitter or whatnot, and um, just put an individual price on it. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. But last week, selling that commission for my price range was great. That was a nice little boost to our monthly bills. And I do need to do my share of bringing the money in, too. This is um, Folk Art Champagne Metallic. It's really a pretty color. It's kind of a real light buttery color. I don't have enough discipline to be a gallery painter. Because this is for fun. It starts being work. Y'all know me well enough by now to know if it feels like work, I'm out of there. Kind of pitiful, but that's the way it is. And I was I was trained to be a portrait, a, you know, a commissioned portrait artist. My tu my tutor in that was very disappointed when I didn't 
take his advice. But you know why? Because you got to deal with clients every day. You've got to travel to where they are. You've got to work with their five-year-old kids. And So there you have it. I hate to disappoint you all, but your wiki is a little bit lazy. I know I have an apron here somewhere. Okay, while well, that's drying, let me check chat. I'm trying to check chat more often. Uh, no, it just says champagne. It's number 675 Folk Art. I got it at Walmart. No, I didn't. That came from Hobby Lobby. Tara, that's... <laughs> Hey, Wendy, that's kind of me. And uh, even even the commissions that I do now, Randy takes them to the client. Because I just, you know, it just makes me have the heebie-jeebies. But this particular client said, don't change the thing. I love it just the way it is. And I'm thinking, whoo, man, that's great. Commission portrait people tend to be a whole lot pickier, too. They like to have their two cents worth. John Singer Sargent had clients like that. Of course, they were the wealthy people he was painting. And they said, I think there's just something a little wrong with the nose. So he went over to his painting and changed the mouth and said, here you go. I mean, he didn't care. <laughs> he, didn't, his, he did not enjoy doing portraits. I'm going to Rosemary Morse's tomorrow for a play day. This, what made me think of that was this uh, paper. That was a fun day last summer. She's got the coolest studio. It's like, it's a, what they call a dog trot? No, yeah. Anyway, it's just one room and then another room and another room. And they're straight back. You go through each room to get to the back. And it's probably a hundred years old and it was on their property. So she took it over as a studio and she's got it all dolled up. Like, you know, Rosemary Wood. It looks like it's, you know, the front door is purple and the tram is yellow and it's just fun. Now I haven't been in quite a while because the daylight savings time I'd have to leave. It's an hour and a half away, so I have to leave down there at 3 in the afternoon. It's just not quite worth an hour and a half drive each way when you're not going to get to spend much time there. So it's spring now. Randy even took me down a couple of times. I also don't drive at night. That's another issue. I never have been able to see good at night. It's got some pretties on it. Seriously, you guys, this is a great way to have a theme in your journal. Just papers that you make. Stamps that you make. And it's intuitive. You're not supposed to spend a whole lot of time designing it. And this was from a jelly printing evening. It was two times, I think, that Shannon Green and I taught at Canvas Corp.
That was fun. Anything with Shannon is fun. I've got a little bit of those in there. Not lose. I'll just save that up there. She's been so busy with her custom keeper. She doesn't go down to Rosemary's Fig very, very often. Maybe she'll be able to more in the spring. I like that better. Now, the difference that putting it upside down makes is that the weight of this page is on the bottom, and that is the way that Westerners read. We read from here to here, across, of course. But So that's why in newspaper world, all the ads are placed on the bottom left and up the, up the, right, the left-hand edge, right-hand edge, and then the bottom left. That's where your ads go and stories go in the middle. There's a little bit of trivia. And I love journaling ever so much more since I started using this Uhu glue stick. Very few wrinkles. You don't have a wet book that you've got to dry. And your pages dry flat. And it, I'm about to lose this one. I think it's gone. I'm not going to try to dig stuff out of it. Not going to do it. I'll do that later. In the floor. Just had another one right here. I've got four up in the crate. I mean in the bucket behind me. So I've used eight. And that's not too bad. You can get 12 for... I don't know, twelve dollars maybe. And I got that from Robin McClendon. She is a bookbinder by trade. She's formerly a bookbinder. So if Robin says that she likes Uhu, I'm gonna use it. There's no sense in invite reinventing the wheel. Until you've got enough experience with a certain thing that you can make your own determination. And that's when you change. But I tell people in my school, Lena and I are talking about it now, as a matter of fact. You have to use either the very same supplies that the teacher is using. Or you substitute something that is very, very similar. Because you want to learn what is being taught. You don't want to reinforce what you already know. You will not get the teacher's results if you do not use the same stuff. I've told you all this before. I was in a, I sponsored a workshop with Les DeMille, and he's very picky about his classroom. I mean, you're paying 350 to 400 maybe more than that now, because that's been quite a few years. You're paying good money to be in a three-day workshop, so you want to give yourself every chance to do it right. Well, there was the, the local guy who was so used to being everybody's guru, and, of course, he wanted to do his own thing. 
And then another guy was having trouble mixing some colors that Les had told him to mix. Les walked up to his palette and said, he tried to mix it and he couldn't. And he said, well, what kind of paint are you using? And your palette is nasty dirty. There's no way you're ever going to get a good color from that. And, of course, the guy was using uh, Winton, uh, which is Windsor Newton's student grade. And you cannot mix the same colors that way. So Les didn't help him anymore because it was in all the materials. No student grade paint. If you're doing it on your own and you're playing, that's fine. But if you're paying good money to study with somebody, you need to do what they use. There. Lecture over. I'm going to let that dry just a minute. Just come over here to chat. Yes, it's Uhu. And it's the big one. And I get the blue one, even though the blue tends to wear away. I've got them in my store. Um, the 12 pack might be $20. I don't know, but it's not. Not that much. Um, my store is, this is Amazon. And I don't get anything if I buy in my own store. I think that's it. Golly, I forget. Let me look real quick. Shameless self-promotion. Hang on, looking for something. Oh, well, maybe somebody will try it and tell me that's not it. There we go. Well, that says that one or the other. Okay, I didn't look to see if there were any more questions. Hey, Janet. Yeah, I mean, look how flat this is. And there's, I did nothing. You will not get that with matte medium. It makes it pleasant. Now, this book, uh, if you want to do one of these idea journals like this, don't get one any bigger than this. In fact, even a narrower one would, would work. It becomes work. The other thing about matte medium is that it gets all stuck to your hands. It comes off easy, but you end up getting stuck with everything on your desk. Who? Who? Uh, who? 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 Um, the reason I went with Uhu is because Robin does, and she sells her work. So I figured that with her knowledge, why reinvent the wheel? And I don't know if it's that much cheaper. It's going to be expensive on at Michaels. Oh, Joycey. Twelve of them for, and I've been doing this, what, I'm a, a little over a year, and I've used, this would be my eighth one, because I've got four in the, four in the bucket for a year. Let me see if that link works. Oh, 
Uh-huh. It does. Uh-huh. Let's just go down there and see what we can see what the price is. Everything that I buy and everything that I use is on this in this Amazon store. And I do it for several reasons. One is I can make a little bit of money. I think I made $50 all last year. But I can also find the things that I buy quickly when I want to replace them. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I don't see it. All right, let me search. Uh, 0.74 ounce. This is 1.1, so that's the bigger one. I don't see it in my store. Hmm. Well, that's going to change. So it's the 141 ounce. And I'm seeing a price here just in regular Amazon that's $30, but I don't think that's what I paid for it. I didn't know it was in the 20s. Here's a six pack of 12 for 20, 21. I mean, 12 pack of the big stick. I'll get it in a minute. I'm going to add that to my add that to my list. Crap. Don't you hate two two step verifications? Three eight four three three three. It's for our own safety. Okay, that one is in my store. See if I put it in the wrong list. I'm coming back, I promise. Can't believe my store didn't have it. I know I put it in there. And then you get over there and go back and they ask you for your password again. Damn it. Anyway, it's there now. 22. Holding my head up so I don't do another like the brushes I did. Okay, back to the back to the stuff. Hey, Linda. Um, I don't know. Looks like it. Distributed by U.S. Sanders or Saunders. And that's all I'm seeing. It's French writing on it, I believe. No, nope, made in Germany. There it is. But anyway, that's, it is expensive, but I'm worth it. 
and see 12 20 dollars divided by 12 is what a dollar 50 maybe per, per big stick since I started cutting papers with this ruler a metal ruler this one has cork on it so I turn it up I turn it backwards with cork up so much easier than scissors or the cutting cutter and save all these little pieces that have paint on them that's why I can't ever run out of printed paper. I love making it. But it has taken over my room. So how much somebody, Joycey, are you using... Uh, Elmer's or one of the bigger 1.41 ounce if somebody feels like doing a price comparison. That's so pretty. And this is a pull-up print or a plate clean-off because this is all paint that was left on the plate. Nice. See the pattern where it laid on a metal table? Little things just tick a poop out of me. Hmm. That might work. I don't need more pattern that's just like what I've got. I mean, you know, two competing patterns because the background is patterned. piece of handmade paper from somewhere it was probably purchased that's nice let's see what happens with this This way it's a little easier. That's got a torn up. Oh, no, no, no. I hate to lose that color. that one for a minute. Don't overthink it. 
This is the best practice in the whole world for me. I'm going to pop that right there and let those little fibers show. And then put this right there. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down so I don't overthink it. So did anybody compare a large 1.4 one ounce of any of the other glue sticks? I got this tool at um, Tuesday morning when y'all were picking up those reflectors the things with the little mirror deal it says a bone folder but i doubt that it's bone and i don't know how to tell them apart but anyway that might that might be a winner A little easier to keep with than a Things been kicking around in my studio for a long time, so it can be used, and I cut it crooked. And yeah, that'll work. Do -do -do -do. I can't get it off. Too tough. So if I put it like that. That'll work. I don't know who made this tissue paper. I found it. Art is good for you. Create magic. I don't see their name on it anywhere. But I do like those um, wheels. I was so tickled when I learned this technique. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever.
Put this little puppy down. Don't check out uh, Robin McClendon. It's R O B Y N. She's got quite a few YouTubes, but she went to a Patreon and a, a paid class format. Ah, I meant to do that. Go with my first instinct. Ooh, a lot. I'm yelling at you, Joycey. I love this pen. This is oh hoo hoo. Have fun with that one, Joycey. And it was, I don't know, something like six bucks. Ridiculously low price. 
and it comes, there's the name of it. It came with two cartridges and a refiller. What do you call it? Anyway, where you can use your own ink. I think I'm going to put this little stamp. I'm going to put two of them. Friend gave me this uh, clear embossing pad when she decided she was all done with using them. And it has seen better days. Look, the poor little cushions just, but it keeps coming back, so. Okie dokie. That's gold. I've had all these embossing things forever. No time like the right time. Get them out. uncoordinated with this stuff. I've got one of those um, pouncer thingies that I bought from eBay in there. It was intended for old-timey drafting tables. I don't know where it is. Well, I mean, I'd find it. Let that cool.
Did you copy and paste the link, Joycey? We're doing great, Linda. How about you? Uh, Katrina, you can, but I think they're about $4 a piece. So that'd be 8 bucks for two. That's the best reason I can think of. Make sure it's the 141 because they make it in two sizes. Yes, anytime you go to Amazon and even go to my page and search all of Amazon from there, I still get some credit. No, there's nothing, nothing wrong with buying two sticks. Especially until you see if you like them. Okay, 0 0.26 ounce times, and this is 141. I don't, I'm not going to do the math. Thanks, Jules. I didn't know that either. So I guess that means just put a bookmark on your page. Okay, that's not too far off. There's a factory outlet store over by Rosemary's. I think they've got Elmer sticks, Rosemary said, that were less. But then I saw her the last time I was there. She was using a new who. So I, I didn't talk to her about it. Thank you, guys. It's not much money, but it sure does help defer the costs. Maisie is a cute name. We looked and looked and looked for rescue schnauzers and couldn't find any. We found one in Florida, and they wouldn't let us have him because our 12-year-old male wasn't fixed. But the dog at the rescue was fixed. So, you know... This ink, the ink that I just put on, that's that sticky ink for embossing. Oh, is the hoo hoo, hoo hoo waterproof? Crap, I don't know. I water on top of it and I don't have any problem. Washable. I don't know what that means with glue. I guess it comes off with water. I don't know. I don't know. Now, if you don't want um, these to be so stark, you can come back over them with a an ink pad, like Distress Oxide, which is what I've got right here. Well. I broke one of the lids getting, getting them off. 
You're supposed to go right back in there. Okay, mess with that later. Um, I'm looking at my colors. See, we've got blue. I don't know if blue will work. Let's try it. And I'll mess with that lid later. Let's see if this works. Um, Robin was using a new stays on. Uh, <coughs> it's in a like a four leaf clover shape. I guess it would probably be better to use that it works. You can color an embossing, which really means if you have white embossing, you can. And that paper underneath is not sealed, so it's not going to be real nice. But that's okay. It doesn't really bother me at all. There. Kind of cool. Okay. Got see what you guys are doing. We love the little puppies, but I know what y'all talking about. You've got to have the bit.ly forward slash capital Vicky capital Ross. Okay, I'm caught up. If we could have found a miniature schnauzer, we would have done that, but we could not. Okay. Oh, I forgot I've got to take a picture. I always take a picture of my stuff immediately after I do it. And if you could see me, I'm standing up on the rungs of my chair holding my iPhone come on turn there. holding my iPhone as square as I can get the edges and fill the frame with it now if I go into Photoshop and fix this I can stretch that down but um, for what I use it for on Instagram, I just crop it close and forget it. Now it's there, ready to go online. What time is it? Ooh, 5.22. Okay, put down the, put down the phone. I think that doesn't look too bad. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to start another one, but I may not finish it. 
because I don't want to bore you guys. This is another neat trick I learned from Robin. This is the Folk Art Color Shift in Pink Flash. That won't go very far, but you can control a little bit more where it goes. And putting it on like this makes the paint real thin so it dries fast. Look how much nicer you're playing when the page is blank. Now, by the time we decide what to put on this, it'll be almost dry. This is, I had a bunch of this fluorescent paper I bought sometime for not really any good reason I could think of. So then I tried jelly printing on it. Color pink is perfect. Maybe, maybe. I've got eyes for you. You know, when I started out with mixed media, I bought everything I could find and cut magazines and because I didn't have anything, so. It takes a while to collect a good bit of this stuff so you have some to pick from. I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to start by cutting this paper off. This paper goes back to my first jelly print sessions. So that would make it a golly, when did they come out? They wouldn't have been too far after that. And I was down in Little Rock with friends and the one and only art store, probably in Arkansas, had just gotten them in and she said, oh, you've got to try this. I didn't know what it was, but I bought it. Nobody knew what to do with them. Though. I think it's the most magnificent tool ever. Nobody will ever know. I'm so glad y'all came to see me today. This has been fun.
I fluctuate between neutral pages and full color pages. I'm really a colorist, but I try to be more of a How are we doing so far? Yeah, I'm back talking about my store. You don't have to just order what's on my store. You can order whatever you want all over Amazon. If you search for it from inside my store. And a lot of people have them. But you don't get credit if you buy your own stuff. So that just encourages you to. Use somebody else's. That's not too bad. Because we're not going to overthink them, right? I get a leftover Red Robin hamburger tonight. Half a one. Went out last night for Randy's birthday. He had over 250 people on Facebook write him notes. And he had 30 phone calls. Everybody loves Randy. He tried to respond to every one of them. I'm going to let this piece just flop over. Kimberly, it was neat when I started out. And on your deli prints, always look on the back of them. This is the paint side. And that's the other side on deli paper. This is cathartic work. I think I like this tool. I would really like to do a Zoom someday or my webinar jam that I've paid for a year so that we can I can hear you guys. You can take turns talking. There. It's a nice, sweet little page. Bye, Tara. Thanks for coming. I'll tell Randy you said that, Miss Lena. Twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. I don't know. Just 
and understand. Oh, what the hell, I'm going to let that show. The paper color, I mean. Do, 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 do. And I don't want them to look all the same. I got to do some more neutral pages. I don't have that many. And I want to do some tans and beiges. Oops. Take your time. Nobody's going to pull it away from you. down here and let that float over to that side that's kind of cool and if I move it just a little bit we'll see that torn edge that I did and then what This is a paper towel. I don't know if this is one of my shop towels. If it is, they're only one sided or one thick, one one thickness. I use the tape method. Nope. Single ply. I buy shop towels from Sam's in a big yellow box because they're they're thick, they're smooth, they don't have a whole lot of lint. Or um, working with the oils. I don't know that that's appropriate for right here, but I'm gonna try this. This is a in the middle and I folded it four times so that I only have to cut my circle once you know back to the old cutting snowflakes at school <clears throat> Let's see what I got Kind of an oval. Okay. 
Okay, so if I cut that much off. I'm gonna leave it because if I keep cutting on it, it'll get worse. It's all right. Sadite, sadite. Let's see what we got here. There you have it. I'm going with it. Dirty paper towel and all. A um, little bit fuzzy edges like cutting like this look a little better and they also stick a little better. You didn't have it like that. Had it like that. I'm so glad y'all like coming to my house. I had it like this. There you go. Helps you protect the lid off. Isn't that just fun how I cut that piece of paper, just cut it widthwise and it fits right with that one as though I had planned it. I love stuff like that. Now, before we close up here, any of y'all who have any questions about that pricing list, whenever you feel like you want to start doing it, let me know, and I will explain it all as you do it, okay? That way we won't bore the people who aren't interested in any of it. I will probably need some different glue for that, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on this with this. Now, I just I really do just enjoy and marvel how some of these papers and this paper towel we're just laying around it looked like a layer but and they all kind of come together in perfect harmony 
Now, my, my goal is always to kind of have the two pages relate, but not be, cop, you know, just carbon copies of each other. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of iridescent bronze, my favorite color. This is by Golden. I haven't done this in a while. The lid stuck. Look, I got one of those little paint, paint buggers. Now this is where it comes in handy because you can control where you put this common accent color. And see just a little not a beautiful color I had remembered that piece of paper that folded over I would have not covered it And there you have it. Nothing wasted. Nothing to clean up. I'm looking at this area up here with the of the paper showing, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now, if ever. Taking my picture. Sometimes they look yummier in, in the picture. Come on, turn for me. Please turn. When you want it to... Not gonna turn. There we go. I kind of like the little touches of the fluorescent yellow shining. And see, wouldn't that be good in a little girl's room? Of course, y'all aren't seeing the good color either. Cool. All righty, let me come over here and. See who's stuck. There's lots of people on there. There we go. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> How about I just save these and send them to you, Josie? I mean, hell, you could make a bead out of that. Excuse my French. Well, this is a high-class moose then, because his is gold. <laughs> Thanks, Vaughn. Have a good meal. Thank you, Janet. Y'all really want me to glue that on? All right. I'll put it on there, and then I'll have to get some better glue. Right in the middle. Now, happy? <laughs> hey, Tana. We're just wrapping it up here. Yeah, I like pink. We're playing with boogers. I don't have a fart machine, so we have to play with boogers. Here's the other one we did, Chana. 
I talked about um, pricing in the beginning. So if you're curious about pricing your art, look at the front part of it. And if you have any questions, let me know. This is a pretty page. I like it. And you can keep going as long as you want. But this isn't the mixed media art that I started with, which was 17, 18 layers. This is more just single layer, you know, simple, more simple. I like that. Pretty, pretty. I'm proud of those. Hey, Beth. The paint bigger. I looked at that and I thought, what is she saying? It's B-O-O-G-E-R, booger. And that's from Arkansas. Well, bye to everybody that I... Um, missed and one of these days we're going to work on those backgrounds I did I did them the other day remember remember with the um, distressed oxide they're here somewhere Maybe I'm... Oh. Can't find them right now, but I know I put them somewhere to dry. Okay. If nobody has anything else, remember you can call me. You can direct message me. My numbers and phone numbers are all over the web. Okay. Bye, Miss Lena. Love you guys. Thanks for coming over and out. Svodka time.